Hey there drone fans, today I'd like to show you how you can easily update the firmware on your DJI Neo drone, or really any DJI drone you're flying today, including your controller, your goggles, your batteries, and even the DJI Fly application itself. But before I get into all of that, let's start with a basic understanding of firmware. What is it, and what does it do? Because a lot of people out there are probably wondering, what's the deal with DJI? They're releasing firmware every couple of weeks. Is it something I should immediately download and apply? Should I grab it and maybe apply it a couple of weeks later? And what does it really do to my drone? Well, firmware is part of the base operating system of the drone. Because you have to remember, what you have here is a very sophisticated flying robot. It's a lot more complicated than a terrestrial robot that just crawls around the ground because it has to move in three dimensions. It's got to elevate and it's got to stay stable in the air. It's got very sophisticated imaging package inside that's going to take beautiful videos and pictures. It's got speed controls. It's got automation. There's AI built in for crash avoidance and the A-Pass features. So it's an incredibly complex device. The base OS, the operating system that runs it, is fundamentally responsible for keeping it in the air, keeping it stable, making sure it doesn't crash into something, and that it records video and reports that back to your controller. So again, there's a lot going on in there. Well, when that drone was released, the engineering team at DJI, I can promise you this, probably had things they wanted to do with the drone that they just couldn't pack into that base operating system at the point of release. So they're still working on features and functions and bug fixes in the labs for a long time after the drone hit the street. And that's not true of a lot of companies. Other companies that are in the electronic space, especially drone companies, will release a drone like the Neo, then they move on to the next drone. They're already developing their next version of the drone, and they really don't care what happens with the drone they just released. Whereas DJI thinks, okay, the Neo's out, the Neo team is still working on features and functions and bug fixes, and will release those as a firmware release, which is something you can apply to the drone on top of the base operating system that improves the drone, it adds features sometimes, it'll fix bug fixes other times, but it basically takes the drone at the point of release and enhances it. So it's absolutely something you'll want to apply to your drone, but then when do you do that? Do you do it immediately? Do you wait a couple of weeks? And I have friends on both sides of that fence. I have some friends that the minute firmware comes out, they download it, apply it to the drone and go out there and fly because they trust DJI. I trust DJI as well, so I do the same thing. But I have other friends that are a lot more conservative and they say, you know what, the firmware came out today, I'm gonna give it a week or two and I'll check the forums, I'll check YouTube and see what the YouTubers are saying about it. And if it looks like it's a solid version, I'll download and apply it. It's totally up to you when you do that. But my recommendation is, number one, understand exactly what the firmware provides. And if there are features or bug fixes that you think you need in a drone, grab it, apply it, and go out there and have fun flying your drone. But if there are major feature enhancements, it's probably something you're gonna to wanna to grab right away. Like for example, with the Neo, when it first came out, it could only be used with the RCN3 controller. Well, a lot of people said, well, wait a minute, I got an RC2, why can't I use it with the RC2? So again, the Neo team was working on the firmware and they said, you know what, it's OcuSync 4, we could definitely release firmware to make it compatible with the RC2, we could change the DJI Fly app to give you that option, and they released the firmware. So the first major release for it, boom, you can fly it with the RC2. Then another firmware update came out once they released the N3 goggles and said, hey, we can use it with the motion controller and we can use the N3 goggles with it. Boom, another version of firmware came out. So if you want to take advantage of those advancements, you got to apply the firmware. So again, don't be afraid of it. I think it's a really good thing. And I always talk about DJI in very positive ways. One of the reasons for that is that I like the fact that a company sold me a product today and their lab teams are still working on improving it in, in adding features to it and eliminating bugs that may be out there that they couldn't have anticipated years in some cases after the drone hit the street. And I think that's pretty amazing. So firmware is something you definitely want to pay attention to, but do your homework. Don't just blindly download it and apply it because I'm going to show you how you can check what each version of firmware introduces with the drone and maybe some impacts it may have on the way the drone flies. But now, as far as the firmware updates go, there's really two fundamental ways you can update the firmware. The first way is what's called over the air, and that's something that most people do today. So when, you, when a new version of firmware comes out, typically you'll get a notice inside of the DJI Fly application that'll say, hey, there's a new version of firmware out for your Neo, do you want to apply it? And if you say yes, what happens is the firmware is downloaded to your phone or your tablet, it's pushed over to the Neo, the Neo may go through a reboot or two, then it comes back and says, firmware's been updated. Now that's a good way to do it. A lot of people like doing it that way. I don't like doing it that way, and I'll, I'll tell you why in a couple of minutes. But if you do it that way, you've got to make sure that the drone is fully charged, that your phone or tablet's fully charged, that you have a solid connection to the drone. 
because if the drone battery's too low or the battery drops below 50% or you break the connection or something funky happens with your tablet, maybe, maybe you get a phone call or a text from somebody, it could interrupt that firmware update. And then you could be in that limbo between the two firmware versions, which I never like. I always like to know I'm on version A, then I move to version B and everything's done. So over the air updates are a quick way to do your update, but I, I don't like those. I like to go through the other method, which I'll explain today. The other thing you want to consider is that firmware updates affect a lot of things in the ecosystem of you flying a drone. And what I mean by that is the firmware update to the drone is the first part. There's a controller in the drone, the firmware affects that controller. If you have a controller, you're using an RCN3 or you're using an RC2, the firmware may affect the controller as well because there's brains inside the controller that has to know you've got a new version of firmware on the drone. So you may have to update the drone and update the controller. The batteries are another issue. A lot of people don't realize that the batteries are intelligent batteries. So inside your battery, there's a controller in here that may need to be updated. And what the mistake a lot of people make is that they'll update the drone, they'll update the controller, they'll head out in the field to fly, and the only battery that got the update was the one that was in the drone when they did the update. They'll get out in the field, they'll fly through a battery, slide the second battery in, they'll get a firmware update warning, and maybe you're not near a Wi-Fi connection, so you can't actually update the battery. So the first thing you need to do, do is, no matter what way you update your firmware, always rotate your batteries through the drone. Another thing I'll warn you about is that after a firmware update, sometimes the basic configurations that you've set for the drone, your return to home height, um, your limitations on how far it can fly, some of your video settings, may be reset. Because some of the firmware is a pretty major upgrade to what the drone can see, and it may reset some of those things. So what I like to do is always take a screenshot of all my configurations before I do the firmware update. So after the firmware update, I can compare those. And if something's changed, I know what I used to have and what I like to set, and I can easily reset that. So make sure you rotate your batteries through and always check those settings, especially that return to home setting after you do the firmware update to make sure that everything is the way you want it. All right, so I've mentioned the over the air updates. That's the way a lot of people like to do it. I like to use the second method where I actually connect it to my laptop and I use a program called DJI Assistant 2, which is something you'll fire up on your laptop gives you a lot of good information about your drone. You'll connect your drone to your laptop, in this case with a USB-C connection. And once that application is running and you connect your drone, it actually reads all the information from your drone that it needs to know to do the update. It does the update over that connection and you can see the progress on your laptop. You can revert to previous versions of firmware, which is really tricky to do over the air. And you can also check the updates that are gonna be made to the drone before you make those changes. So I like using that DJI Assistant program to do the updates. I think it's the safest way to go. It's also faster because you're moving those bits across the wire as opposed to over the air. So I'll show you how to do that now, and then I'll come back and give you a couple other pointers when I'm done with that. All right, so the first thing you'll need to do before you get started anywhere is you'll head to the DJI download page. Now the way you can find that is the way I like to do it is I'll, I'll put in a search bar like for the Neo, uh, DJI Neo Specs, and that'll take you to the main page which actually shows you the specifications for the drone. That's a great place to start. And if you look at the top of that page, you'll see a downloads uh, icon up there. Just tap that. That'll take you to the downloads page. Now that's where you're gonna grab the firmware to update the drone. And I'll go through this page because there's a couple of really important things on here. So the first thing you'll see is the DJI Fly application. That's the actual program you'll use on your phone. Or if you're using an RC2, it's on the RC2. And you want to make sure uh, that you've got the correct version. And it'll show you right there what the latest versions are. And it's both for the Apple and Android products. Write that down. Write down the version right there that says V1.15.5. Write that down. And if you're using the Android, write that one as well. Because that's information you can use later. Then if you scroll down the page a little bit more, you'll get to the softwares and drivers section. On there, you'll see that DJI Assistant 2 for consumer series drones. That's the program you're gonna to need to run on your computer. And there are two versions there, again, for Mac or for Windows. Download that, install it on your computer, and that's like the base starting point for doing your updates. And once you download it, you've got it. But always check that, because again, that application changes as well. The latest version of it, which you're gonna need, to um, enable the goggles and do the goggle connection to your drone is v2.1.30.1. And that's important because the last version, for some reason, was v2.1.30, and there was no dot one. You need the dot one version to be on the latest. Okay, so once you've downloaded that, down the bottom there are manuals. So if you keep scrolling down that page that I showed to the downloads page, on the bottom there's a ton of manuals. And that first manual you'll see there is the release notes. Uh, you want to open that up and take a look at the release notes for the latest version of firmware. It also tells you what versions of firmware have been released. So let me take a look at that. All right, so the latest one at the top of the page uh, is V01.00.0400. 
and it was released on the uh, 6th of November. So you know you've got the latest version right there. It also tells you what version of the DJI Fly app you'll need. So that's why I said write that down before, because you want to make sure you're on the latest version of the DJI Fly app, because some features are enabled in that application. But at any rate, that'll tell you what the latest version of it is. Then if you look down a little further, it'll tell you what's new, what enhancements have they made to the drone. In this case, they added vertical shooting. Now there's a big feature for people flying the Neo. That wasn't there at launch. So again, they didn't release a Neo 2 that did vertical uh, formatting. They released firmware that updated the one you already own and are flying with vertical shooting. Uh, they added in-app control for other manual controls for full screen. That's a big one because if you're flying it from your phone, you can now flip it sideways and you've got a full screen view. Um, noise reduction effect for audio recording from natural to ambient. So all these things are what I consider to be major upgrades to the drone that some of which we all kind of noticed out of the gate and we're hoping they'd fix. Well, they fixed them in this version. All right, down below that, there are a couple of notes. And the notes are really important to read through because it's going to say you want to restart the device after it's complete. And then, I, as I mentioned before, some of the firmware updates may affect various flight parameters. So you got to make sure you check that. And then if it fails, my recommendation is reboot your laptop, do the connection again, and start the firmware update. All right, so once we're done, the process you got to follow is install that DJI Assistant 2 software, open the application, make the physical connection to your drone. The minute you do that, the application's gonna pop up with what it sees. So in this case, we've got a Neo connected. So you wanna click that DJI Neo, and it'll take you to the main page. Now, the things you see here are really important. You'll see the three versions that are out, 0200, 0300, 0400. Each one of those improved the Neo in some specific way. And the nice thing is you can see the release notes off to the right. And if you click that button right there, it's gonna start the update process. The first thing it'll do is it'll pull the bits down from the internet onto your laptop or your desktop. Then it'll push them out to the drone. And again, this takes a couple of minutes, depending on how big the firmware update is. It might take a little bit longer, but you'll see the process continuing. And I like that a lot because the over the air kind of gives you an update, but I don't know if it's as accurate. Here I can get an accurate view of exactly what's going on and what's being pushed to the drone. And then finally, when it's done, it's going to say update complete, which is great. So now you know the update's finished and everything is good to go. Now, what I'd like to do at this point is use the back button and go back to the main screen to make sure that the update took. And I can see now that it's the current version is 0400, which is exactly what I need for the latest version of firmware. And that's pretty much it. So once you do that update, uh, you've got the latest version of firmware on your drone. Now, what I would suggest beyond that is if you're using the goggles, connect those up. If you're using the motion controller, connect that up. If you're using the RC2 or the RCN3, connect that up because as I mentioned, a lot of times the interaction between your peripherals and the drone are really important. And the last thing you want to do is get out in the field after updating this with new features you can't wait to try out. You get out in the field and you find out, uh-oh, the motion controller is not compatible because it's on an older version of firmware, or the RC2 isn't going to connect because it doesn't understand the, the new firmware on the Neo. So always check all your devices before you leave home so that when you head out there, on that beautiful Saturday afternoon with the sun shining and the birds chirping in the background and you're ready to put your drone up, you're not gonna have one of those oh my gosh moments where there's firmware incompatibility between your devices. And it really is just that simple to do. So again, a couple things to keep in mind. I like using the connection as opposed to the over the air updates. When you're doing your updates, always rotate your batteries through the drone. If you've got five batteries, plug them in, turn it on. If there's gonna be a firmware update required, it'll tell you that. Update all your batteries. Connect your controller before you leave the house. If you've got goggles, connect your goggles. And check to make sure that the DJI Fly application is the latest and greatest, because that's where all the features are built in that actually interact with the drone to control it. And that's pretty much it. So it really is just that simple. And I hope I've answered your questions. Don't fear the firmware updates. If anything, think about the firmware updates as a gift from DJI. <laughs> They're working on new updates. Their engineering team does not sleep. I'm convinced of that because their firmware updates are coming fast and furious. And pretty much every one that's come out for the Neo, all three of them, has given me features that I cannot believe they built into a drone this small at this price point. I think they've done an outstanding job with this drone. And anybody flying this probably appreciates it as much as I do. So that's all I really had for today. I hope you got value out of the clip. Thanks an awful lot for watching. And until next time, as always, Happy flying.